I'm a huge fan of The Name of the Wind. It's one of my favorite fantasy novels, and I always end up rereading it once or twice a year. Unfortunately, it's rather infamous for being an unfinished series, like A Song of Ice and Fire by G.R.R. Martin. The last book was released in 2011. Since then, news about the third book has been sparse at best. But that all changed in 2021 when there was a brief moment of hope. Because for the first time ever, we thought we might get an official peek into the Doors of Stone. You see, the author of the series, Patrick Rothfuss, runs a charity called World Builders. This charity donates to Hyper International, and every year Patrick does an end-of-year livestream for the charity. There are guests and games and stretch goals. These stretch goals are the basis for this whole story. You see, this year Patrick did something a little different. He made a wager. The wager was this. If $333,000 were to be raised before Patrick could beat the Ender Dragon, well, then he would read the Doors of Stone prologue. He would also conduct a Book 3 Q&A live, and show some early illustrations from a comic that he and Nate Taylor were working on. But by far the biggest one was that he said he would release a full, self-contained, and spoiler-free chapter of The Doors of Stone. This chapter in the prologue would be our first official look at the novel. The only other information we have of the book is from a leak, when Rothfuss accidentally showed a page of the book on stream. There was also that time that the cover art got leaked when it was accidentally sent to the wrong Patrick. Yes, that really happened. But the actual cover art has never been revealed, and all we really know is that the color orange was prominent. So, there's that. Well, and the Betsy incident, but more on that later. The goal was reached, and Patrick read the prologue. It was pretty good. If you've read these books, you know that the prologues from the books are pretty similar to each other. But this one actually had some interesting differences, enough that people began to extrapolate theories from it. And you know it's bad when the fans are making theories based on a prologue. But with that first wager completed, Patrick decided to up the ante. And he did this by including a lot more goals. One of the notable ones was that he would write a short story in the world of Temerant live on air. Unsurprisingly, he never ended up doing that stream. It's weird though because I don't see most people complaining about this. I think everyone ended up forgetting about it because of the chapter drama. Another goal he put in place said that he would assemble a team of geek Avengers to read the new chapter. This goal was also reached, and yet we're still waiting on the chapter, and of course the geek Avengers to be reading it. This instance isn't the first time that Patrick has discussed releasing sample chapters. This is just the first time that he's explicitly promised a chapter. Before, it was very tentative stuff. He said, maybe I'll ask my publisher, stuff like that. And I guess that's the big issue at heart here, because he scammed people. I mean, he promised people something if they donated, and he didn't follow through. And it is true that the money went to a good cause, that of Hyper International. It's not like Patrick took the money and just ran off with it. But I will also warn you that Hyper International itself has come under criticism in recent years for not being entirely effective. This video is not about Hyper International, but if you're interested in learning more, I've provided some links in the description below. At 670,000, Patrick would announce he was going to read the chapter. Now, obviously, this didn't happen because the chapter has yet to be read or published. At 696,000, it reads, Crumpled Manuscript Page with Pat's Glasses. Now, this one is obviously a troll tier, but he also didn't deliver on it anyway, so in my eyes, it's a false promise. He also didn't deliver on part two of his book, The Q&A, at least as far as I can see. If I somehow missed this one, I apologize. But he didn't show those early illustrations of his comic, which is another tally on our list. Let's move forward a bit. The fundraiser is done. It smashed its goal by 100,000, and it's a new year. And yet, no chapter. Well, okay, maybe Patrick was busy. I always want to give people the benefit of the doubt. So, what was he up to this year? Well, in February, he posted to his blog talking about streaming Dungeons & Dragons. No update on the chapter, though. In fact, this blog hasn't mentioned the chapter once since December 14th, 2021. Okay, so I actually found that he has mentioned the chapter in one of his blog posts this year, but it was in the comments. As you can see here, he's responding to someone asking about the chapter, and he offers an apology and says that he has an update post about half-written, and that we should expect more details soon. Please keep in mind this was in June, and as of this recording, it's been about four, about to be going on five months later. He does actually mention the third book, though, in a blog from June, saying, quote, He's not looking forward to the people who are going to come after him for doing anything other than working on book three. In fact, he has, quote, persistent dread because every time he tweets or leaves his house for a walk, there's a 50-50 chance of someone coming up to him and asking him about it. I mean, I completely empathize with Patrick here. I mean, think of how horrifying it would be for a fan to come up to you and ask you when your next book is going to come out. I mean, shivers up my spine and goosebumps all over my arms. It's horrifying. I better play Minecraft on Twitch instead of ever releasing another book again. It's just too scary for me. All jokes aside, I think he's just trying to be really dramatic here for attention, because he streams on Twitch all the time, so I don't think it really bothers him that much. 
or at least he used to pretty frequently. He actually hasn't streamed in four months or so as of this video. I'm going to imagine that's because the chapter questions would just flood his chat, which is sort of hilarious because one of the rules for his Twitch chat is nothing about book three. He says, quote, it'll be done when it's done. Even with this rule, people will always end up asking questions in chat about the third book, and Patrick gets pretty pissy about it. If you look around, you can find countless clips of him getting angry or frustrated with people for asking pretty harmless questions. I think one of the most notable video clips is the use your fucking head moment, which is pretty bad, and if you haven't seen it, I'll play it right here. You think if there was a pub date, would I have mentioned it already? Like... No offense, but, like, use your fucking head. There's also this really funny uh, Reddit post where a fan met Patrick Rothfuss at a convention or something, and apparently he was just really rude. Of course, it's the internet, and this guy could just be completely lying or something, but I sort of doubted it because it has Patrick's behavior down to a T. Now, honestly, I'm going to need a drum roll for the worst Patrick moment of all time. Okay, ready? And now. Would you look at that? Isn't it just glorious? Also, weirdly, he singles out men here. I'm not sure what that's about. Really strange. I don't know, this whole tweet is just a mess. And a month before that tweet, he said this on a stream. Uh, I tell ya, uh, there's a lot of things in process. And things are moving more slowly than I would like. And a lot of the reason for that is that I am moving more slower than I would like. Um... There's, there's just kind of a lot. And when this got posted to the subreddit, the comments got completely nuked by the mods. This is because up until very recently, this subreddit was actually really pro-Patrick. But I wouldn't say that's true anymore. Like any time the chapter gets brought up, the comments are overwhelmingly negative. With a very common line of thought being that he hasn't even written any of the book, let alone the chapter. It's usually not a good sign when your own fans start turning against you. Now let's turn our eyes back to that blog post I mentioned earlier. You know that one where Patrick says he feels constant dread about being asked about book three? Well, in that same blog post, Patrick is asking for more money. Yes, really. Money for what, you may ask? Well, money for a new publishing company. This publishing company ended up raising $420,000 of a 20000 goal, showing that people don't really learn and will happily give money to someone who's already scammed them. The company is called Underthink Press, and its goal is to find graphic novels out of print and republish them. This is a good idea. I actually really like this. Lost media is something I am really interested in, and it's always good to see other stuff preserved. But the point that I keep pressing is that this guy still hasn't delivered his other promises before embarking on this other crusade. This crusade, by the way, has been the subject of four out of five of his blog posts this year, the last one being in June. Since then, it's been pretty quiet. No heartfelt apology or detailed explanation why people who paid for something have yet to receive it, almost a year later. If any other celebrity did this, it would be all over the news. Imagine if G.R.R. Martin did it or Brandon Sanderson. Their public image would be forever marred by it. But no, Patrick gets off light. And it's not like I want him to be attacked online or harassed or anything, I just want the chapter he promised. Though at this point, I doubt we will ever get this chapter, or even the full book. And if you wanted another nail in this coffin, well, look no further than Patrick's editor, Betsy Walheim, who in 2020 said she'd never seen a word of book three and thought that Patrick hadn't been writing in years. Patrick has never addressed these comments from Betsy, making me think they're probably true and he's just too afraid to talk about it. Which is a shame because Betsy is also the owner of Dub Publishing, which publishes Patrick's duology. And up until very recently, Dub Publishing was a family-owned business, passing down from father to daughter. This is no longer the case. In 2022, Da was sold to Astra Publishing. The writing was on the wall this past year or so. Authors such as Michelle West and Cass Morris were dropped by Da completely, while people like CJ Cherry had their audiobooks canceled. These were last attempts at cutting costs, and evidently they didn't work. I can't say that Patrick is 100% at fault for this, but he's definitely part of the issue. Da was never a big company to begin with, and Name of the Wind was one of, if not their best sellers. With no big third book that Patrick was contractually obligated to write, Da struggled, as seen by Betsy's comments. So while the woman who helped Patrick get his big break struggled and was eventually forced to sell her father's company, Patrick started his own publishing company with crowdfunding. While authors struggled and were eventually dropped, Patrick played Minecraft and D&D. Like I said, it's not entirely his fault, but he was damn well part of it. So when authors like Neil Gaiman say G.R. Martin isn't your bitch, know that in essence he is correct. Authors don't owe us anything. Well, except for the chapter, but that's different. 
They aren't under any legal obligation to fans to finish their series, but I think that Patrick does really have an obligation to Betsy and also to his fellow authors. Big series like his are what keep publishing companies afloat. Most books just don't sell very well, but in the end I digress. I'm not involved in the scene, I don't know Patrick personally or Betsy or any of the other authors involved in this, so it's not my place to say. Other than the fact that he owes us the chapter. But, that's all. And to send me out, here's a video of Patrick being a complete asshole to a pizza guy. So did you guys get to hear that? Did you hear? Yeah. Uh-huh. He asked a fucking pizza guy, asked about book three. 